Richard Bruce here. So I wanted to tell you guys about some issues that I've had just recently and they have to do with doubts in my faith and I want to just describe an experience I just had where being desperate as I am in this homeless situation which is a a nightmare every day and the heat has been on definitely from Satan as I experience it and the chopper harassment and everything else and things also tend to get dry for me in summer because usually I've worked in the movie industry as a extra and I can get part-time work like that and um, but I just want to talk to you about this um, this my novel that I wrote and it took me 10 years to write it because it just I'm really slow and I think I stopped for a while and then I went back to it and I really actually myself really liked it but I want to tell you about the fact that we can go our whole lives thinking that the one thing that we really love is like a ray of hope in an otherwise dark it's like this little ray of light but that little ray of light is in fact where evil can come in and so recently in my desperation I've thought to sell my novel try to edit it again and see about finding a agent and have it published which would give me some money to live because I'm like completely out of money and I'm like sitting here every other week wondering where my next meal is going to come from and I realize that this is part of what God has in store for his chosen his elect and it's all part of the journey if you read the scripture I mean you look at Jeremiah sunken in the mud I mean how long did he have to be down there in this miserable situation far worse than what I'm experiencing and all throughout the scripture you know we know that for instance in Paul's writing just constant tribulation constant poverty constant uh, threats of death you know pain um, you know how, who knows how many times he slept outside in the freezing cold and you know shipwrecked and everything else so we know that these kinds of difficulties are going to come but in this case um, I myself sinned and because I I think that I received a message from God which is why I didn't publish it in the first place and I got this message something like seven or eight years ago when I was polishing it up and I was gonna publish it and there's this weird summer storm and incidentally the same thing happened here it's very rare for there to be rain in July but there was and there was a massive storm and even this time and I even recorded some of it and but what happened was I think that it's it's possible it just kinda seems like a sign to me that it's a it's an upset over doing this evil of publishing my novel now you say well what you know why you want to publish an evil novel well obviously in my heart I don't think it's evil or at least in my in my peripheral mind I don't think it's evil but I got a, a message finally after kind of a while of working on it and editing it and I started to send out samples to agents and so forth and then yesterday as I was reading in the scripture uh, I was reading in Proverbs actually let not thine heart decline to her ways go not astray in her paths and that's uh, Proverbs 725 and the going in the in the paths in her paths uh, the, the paths of, of the evil woman Babylon the daughter of Babylon but I think it's like the it's kind of like the female counterpart of Satan you know you go in her ways those who go in unto her never come back out as the scripture says it says for she has cast down many wounded many strong men has been slain by her her house is the way to hell going down to the chambers of death and um, this is this is warning us that when we enter into the ways of the great whore Babylon who stands on many waters which is America as the scripture says it is a nation it is a city it is a woman as the scripture 
outlines, especially in Jeremiah 50 and 51 and in Isaiah 13 and 14 and other places in Scripture. So um, when I got that message, my heart just sank. I just got so depressed. I, this is what this happened day before yesterday and and well actually yesterday Saturday the Sabbath was when I was reading the scripture as I do on the Sabbath morning on Saturday and that's when I I just turned right to this Proverbs 7 just spontaneously turned to it and read that and then I read in other places in the scripture similar things that that backed that up so I spent all yesterday really depressed and uh, because my heart really loved that novel because I had spent the last three weeks rereading it after not reading it for a long time and going through it and editing it because uh, I tend to make a lot of mistakes and it's like I can't even see them as I'm writing especially on this novel for some reason maybe it was the Holy Spirit blocking my mind the whole time uh, which I, I found in other people too when they start to speak words against me or start to say something um, negative toward me it, their their writing and their email gets all broken up very strange and I don't I know that they're not normally that incompetent but maybe that's what was happening here so I felt really heavy and depressed and but I knew that God had given me this this message and I knew that I had to give it up all the hope that I had that maybe I can finally find something to have a home and um, and it just all flushed down the toilet just went and um, I realized that what I was doing by by taking and selling this novel was I thought about the evil of it and you know all this stuff you can't be sure of anything whether it's right or wrong of course I said to myself you know hold on is this just another doubt or is it you know do I need to rethink this or am I just feeling negative and feeling like I can't do anything otherwise it's it's an evil but I really feel like I got a message about it and I just thought that as I examined why I would have that really, um, you know, feeling that it's that it's wrong is it's it's not just um, it's the selling of it's one of the main things because I don't think writing it necessarily is what is what hurts you. It's when you would disseminate a message across a wide variety of people who might read it and it could be like throwing out the the dreams of an evil heart and all these various evil things that go with it even though there's there's good things that are partially in it it's also spreading a, a lie it's it's you know it's a fantasy it's a fantasy novel but the things in it are probably promoting things which are wicked which don't seem evil to us in the ordinary consciousness but from a different standpoint for instance when the scripture says we will have the stone heart taken out and be given a flesh heart looking back as also the scripture says we will look upon our sins and we will be filled with regret and remorse and and wincing with pain at our sins at that moment we will realize our sins and then uh, so what I'm saying is that from that perspective then you can see it then you can understand then you can realize how dirty it is then you can realize how harmful it is so um, I wanted to relate that and that uh, I just don't know you know obviously I still don't know what to do and uh, as far as making a living goes and I was really depressed because I really liked the novel. there's really a lot of things about my novel rainy city that I liked and thought that were really well well done even though I think my writing's a little bit simple maybe not quite prime time in, in a few areas in other words not professional enough but still overall I'm um, pretty awesome I had it reviewed by a professional who gave me a positive review about it and he said it would be marketable but you know if I'm violating God's will and doing something evil then of course you nothing's worth that so I mean this is the test of the world this is the trial of the world so all these things I see even though they're embarrassing failures and you just go oh my god what the hell am I doing um, and you, you know like if I didn't I get a message about this before and here I am doing it again 
and uh, you know, and you just get embarrassed, and you feel you feel like a like a, a, a hopelessness. And um, so I'm going to move on to the next thing because that is really related to it. Is that during this year and four months that I've been homeless? So you saw me when I was making videos. If you've watched my channel, you watched some of my earlier channels. I was in my apartment in Woodland Hills. So now I've been homeless for a year and four months, and it has during this time has been the most trying for my faith that has ever been and I've had like four different times when not that I stopped believing in the scripture but I really just like got so fed up and angry or just like felt like you know I, I just don't even think that maybe it's right for me to be a Christian and I'm on my way to hell and I just should give it up and just you know do the best I can to make it in the world minus all this knowledge of God that I got about not doing the evil things of the world because everything I want to do is the evil of the world and I know all of my family and friends would say oh my god you're wasting your life and your talent and everything else and you should be you know fully put, putting out your talent and enjoying yourself and you know mingling with the world and doing all this stuff and as some of you who have been down this journey and you, you can only know it if you've got to the point where you've realized that you can't just do anything. You know you have to be very, very careful. The pathway to life is straight and narrow, and the ways of death are wide, and and is what most people see as the normal way, even Christians, and you know what happens. So I had four different times when I really felt like I had um, just totally lost my faith, and at least two of those times was when I was I remembered specifically that I was going to do something for a living in the world which you know seems to the normal person why not but there's a deeper question about it as I put in my series salvation as I've read there's a there's a huge question mark over just ordinary things that people might do for a living which if your heart doesn't warn you or if God doesn't pull you out of it or, or whatever however it works is going to be a cause of going to hell. Um, and so uh, this is uh, you know really disturbing and and it's like the it's like all of a sudden I've been put under the fire and it was all in conjunction with discovering this whole shape-shifting thing and and exposing it on YouTube and then helicopters buzzing me day and night and police following me and everything else which you've seen on my channel if you've watched it. Um, so this is all in conjunction with that and Satan turning up the heat and I think also Satan's beasts and Satan's workers working in people, which uh, I realized I've had this all my life. I think that they've gone back in time from the very beginning as I think I've expressed and they knew I was an enemy. They knew and so everything's been done against me. Every place that I go, Satan who lives in demons that lives in people, comes out against me and there in everything happens against me you know the hearts turn against me in every single place and then there's everything else working against me it's like I've been minimized in every single way in every single job category that I could possibly do it gets ruined somehow either by who knows what's what's happening whether it's demons in other people whether it's demons in me or you know events that they are doing to minimize me but I can tell you um, you know, when somebody when somebody's working against you, you you really start to notice it, and then when you become aware that this, this whole demons thing is real, then you really realize that we do have an enemy that's working against us 24/7, and it is um, it is scary, it is uh, disheartening, and uh, it really is real. And uh, also, uh, Satan tries to drive you crazy by making you isolated and so that you think that you're only just going nuts because it just seems like these weird odd things are happening against you but the more you look, look into that key word demonology the more you realize that weird stuff they do weird stuff they, they I just saw a video where a man was explaining a former Satanist who explains to him that demons communicate with each other and they know when there's something that's really going to bother you and then they communicate with other demons that are working in other people and those people come against you and they try to get that person to sin because they they make them so enraged by the things that uh, that they have other people do against you or things that happen in your life so that all it takes is when you rage and then if you 
you know, break something or you break the law or something, then they got you. And if you, you know, then, then you're busted or you're, you know, so you break something, you, you go nuts. And I have had more of being on the edge of, of just going, just raging. I mean, raging uh, in this last year and four months than I've had in my whole life. And I've had moments, but I haven't had, and I, I really haven't had any serious doubts about my faith, uh, like I've explained, except for those four times in this last year and four months. Um, and uh, so that's the that's the third thing, or the, the second thing rather. And uh, and then the main uh, another thing is that also I've had a, a thing about prayer, and I've had serious and grievous doubts about prayer. Okay, so as I may have mentioned, I started getting what seemed like messages to pray, and you get that 333, and I know a lot of you have gotten that. You just keep seeing that 333 3, or 333, and we equated that, or I have equated that, and many people have, to the Jeremiah 333, which is uh, the call upon me, call upon the name of the Lord, and it's a call to prayer, or at least that's what I felt it was. But I want to tell you about something that happened, which is that I got one of those 333s while I was watching some anime at night, which I do to, to relax. And that right there is suspect, right? Right in the middle of watching anime. But let me tell you something. Um, I've been doing that for years, and it's uh, God gave me a message about watching regular TV, but I, I get so bored and depressed at night that I like to watch you know an hour or two of anime when I come back to the RV. And before, while I'm before and while I'm eating dinner. Okay, now when this happened, uh, I saw that 3:33, and um, it just it seems like it happens all the time. Boom, 3:33, 3:33, and it seems like it's like, like my eyes get diverted to something, and I and I see it, and I like uh, sometimes I obey it, sometimes I don't, but this time I just totally raged, and I said the Lord's prayer like really angrily, and just looked like a total ass before man and before God just sitting there angrily saying it like I just I just raged and then at that after that happened I just stopped and I just said whoa what the heck am I doing here and what I realized all of a sudden is that I was not there was something wrong with my prayers there was something wrong with what I was doing and I had serious doubts as to whether or not my prayers were sincere with God, whether I was doing it right or whether I'm sitting there just selfishly talking to myself or, you know, if, if, if this is having anything, any sort of real impact. Now, I don't think that I've, I've understood prayer. I don't think that I've really done the, the homework on prayer or I haven't figured it out because I, I just don't know what to do or say a lot of times. You know, I'll just sit there and like I'll say the Lord's Prayer and then I'll just sit there and kind of go... Okay, Lord, uh, you know, thank you for all these things, and uh, yeah, I know I've said that 50 million times, uh, and I'm just kind of floundering, you know, and I know that a lot of people may not have that experience as much, or some people that have really found or understood prayer are really, you know, in it, and they can just, you know, really be in the spirit and really do it, but I haven't, I haven't, I haven't gotten it, and it still, I still have serious doubts about it, and as I'm sitting there doing it, um, you know, and the more I thought about it, it just felt like there's, there was something not real about it. And finally I said, you know what? This isn't real. This isn't real. Whatever I'm doing, sitting here talking to myself, supposedly talking to God, supposedly thanking God, supposedly making my requests known to God, whatever else it is I can think of to pray, there is something not real about it. Not that there's something unreal about prayer, because the scripture clearly says that we are to pray and, and, and to pray unceasingly. And there's no question about it. Prayer is supposed to be part of the life of the apostle. But I have got to the place after, after these events of that, that one moment of where I just raged and then afterwards thought about it and tried praying a few more times and then just asking about what this was and so forth. But I have gotten to the place where I'm sitting right now where, and I could be wrong, 
sinning and rebelling. That's what this could be. So I'm not teaching anybody here about how to, to pray or anything or that I'm right. So don't get me wrong about this, okay? Because I know the, the majority of comments I'm going to get are, you're, you're on the pathway to hell now. You're going to hell because you, you've lost your faith. You're rebelling. You're divided. And that's another thing, too, I want to be very clear on. I, I'm going to be completely honest with you and tell you, as a Christian, I am divided. Therefore, and, and uh, let me expound on that a little bit more, okay? By divided, I mean I still love the things of the world, even though I've realized, and I knew from the very beginning, that, you know, it's like all this stuff is evil, and you just you just need to let it go. But and I, I hate reading the Bible. I hate it, okay? I'll be honest with you. It... it bores me. It, it's depressing. I just have to sit there and grind through it on the Sabbath day because I just, I would much rather be watching my anime or playing videos or, or making videos or something. But it's hard for me to read the scripture, especially some areas of the Old Testament, New Testament, like Paul's writings in the New Testament and books like uh, Deuteronomy. You know, it just, oh God, I just I mean just grinding, trying to to stay focused on it. My mind just keeps wandering away from it because I have attention deficit disorder and, and dyslexia and so forth. So it's very hard to pay attention to it. So it's hard for me to to focus on the scripture. Let me back up to one point, which is that when I first became a Christian, and as I was reading in the scripture, I realized something about prayer and something about the cold or hot or lukewarm in terms of your walk with God. And what I realized was that I I didn't have what it takes to be hot because for the very reason I said because I myself my nature and the things that I like and the things that I do are such that I didn't like reading the Bible and I don't like the things of God and, and, and that the things like in the in the writings of Paul um, you know when you see the, the character of the Apostle and the things and I am so far away from being that from what Paul was or what the the people that he that he loved Timothy and and all the people that he was writing to and and were involved in the early church I'm so far away from that that I realized that I didn't like the, those things of being an apostle and being a Christian. But I knew that I, I had an opportunity to be saved. So what I figured was that I was cold because I'm not going to like do some sort of lo lukewarm part-time stuff for God. I'm going to be cold because I believe that God said I, I were it that you were cold or hot and so I figured might as well be cold so getting back to the divided was that I figured well if I'm cold then there's got to be something else to do with my life so I might as well do what I like to do I like to draw I like to write I like creative stuff and uh, and just do what I can to make it and enjoy that or whatever if for a hobby or do another job or something else so that's what I did so I think that's why in some respect I'm divided. Now I could have been wrong this whole time, but but God has a path for you, okay? And if it's the path of failure, then it's the path of failure. But I believe that there is a plan for each person's life, even if they are failed. You know, it's not like you're stumbling along. You still have to have, you know, a, a consequence, but it's there's a, there's a plan that goes with everything. So that's why I'm divided and I, and uh, because I still love the things of the world. I still love Satan's things. I love Satan's media. I love Satan's television. I love Satan's cars. I love Satan's guns. I love Satan's drugs and alcohol and rock and roll. Okay? Not that I, I'm doing those things because I, I slowly kind of weed them out as I've, as I've gone along here. That's the, that's the truth of the matter. I didn't just cut them off cold turkey. You know, I've heard some people, they, when they come to God, they just... I mean, all they do is read the Bible and go to church and their whole life is nothing but church or whatever and work and stuff. And that's definitely not my experience. I mean, I basically did my own thing, you know, 
Christian in the back of my mind, and this is the way a lot of Christians are, you know, you, you know that, I mean, this, this, is, this is not uncommon, it's not unusual, but at least I acknowledged that I was cold towards God and I wasn't hot for God, even though sometimes in my heart I felt like I was hot for God. And the scripture says, if you're divided, let not that man think that he'll receive anything of God. And so, that I'm talking about the beginning of my faith where, you know, I realized that prayer was something that I wasn't going to be doing a lot of. And then, as I mentioned, in this recent part of my life when the fire was really on, because I started uploading reptilian shapeshifter movies, then um, I started, it seemed like I started getting messages that 33-3. And I, you know, you'd even wake up at, uh, in the morning at um, 333 and then I heard in this uh, video this Christian video that this man made talking about an ex-satanist um, witch doctor guy who was uh, cursing people and everything else and then he repented and became a Christian but he told him that when he was in the, when he was working for the demonic realm it's that the the Holy Spirit knows what's going on in the spirit world so that's why we get messages in the middle of the night or various times to pray and that's what that is so um, we don't know why we're being asked to pray but we're being asked to, to pray and he also he also said that um, there's a, a shield that's over us that prevents like a rock shield that keeps the prayer from going up the prayer rises like a like a vapor is what he described and that um, only if you pray like after a long time of, of continual uh, prayer and uh, you know if, if there's an interruption it'll break it but it, it, you have to pray for a long time and then it makes a fire which breaks through that barrier and then that's when your prayer reaches to God now I I don't know if that's true or not but maybe it is but as I just I'm not advocating anything here I'm telling you my uh, my experience with prayer right now because I wanted you to to know that because I had said that I was praying three times a day and I stopped doing that and uh, I stopped praying very much at all right now, except for, you know, I just maybe say a few things or whatever. But I want to tell you that because, um, you know, if something goes wrong with me or if I, I have a revelation where I say, you know, okay, if God revealed to me what happened with this prayer thing, then I can tell you that I had this moment of doubt and that if you have moments of doubt or if you have moments of falling away like that, that uh, there's, a you know, somebody else who's had a similar experience. I know that probably some people are going to, you know, automatically assume that I'm, you know, a false Christian and that I'm basically, this is like the beginning of my falling away. Um, and I, I can understand that. I understand that your point of view. And I always have doubts about people that I watch too, you know, are they, you know, they're so strong in their faith, but then, you know, you hear them later, you know, the Joel Olstein and various other people that you see, you know, they were so strong, so powerful. And then they start saying things that, you know, really lead you to believe that uh, they are off the beaten path. So I wanted to tell you that and it's not that I have lost my faith it's that I think that you know it's a it's either a trial or it's something but it's not like I'm I'm falling away or I've you know not not believed in my salvation or in anything else that's written in the scripture I still believe that the scripture cannot be broken as Jesus said and I have hope to go to heaven and eternal life I think this is a, a trial and you know maybe somebody who's out there has something that they want to say to me about this and, and can leave it in the comments and or email me that um, that they want to say to me about this or make a reply video and give me a link to it to let me know what you what your thoughts about this are and you know what it sounds like my situation is or what I should do next if you have a suggestion about what to do about it because I really don't know I mean you know I I have been you know I think kind of acting like a preacher but I, I as I've tried to say before I'm really not I'm just expressing what I've read in the scripture and what I think the most important thing is you know salvation is largely about from the details that you can get from scripture and with some of my differences from what some of the mainstream uh, belief systems are concerning the scripture because I've never been one to 
necessarily trust what other people say about it. I wanted to read the scripture for myself and figure it out. And I want you to be clear in my understanding. When I said I hate reading the scripture, I don't always hate it and I don't hate all of it. But the fact is it's uncomfortable for me and it's boring and my mind wanders. And I, and also a lot of it, you know, is just so foreign to me as far as what I like and what I feel like that I feel like it's like a million miles away. But I want to be sure that you understand that when I say that, I am not speaking against the Bible. I am not saying that I think that there's anything wrong in it, as I've expressed many times before. I believe that the scripture is perfect. This is what God wants us to see as far as his word. What I'm saying is that my nature is so wicked that I can't, I, I don't find myself loving it you know and I've heard other people other preachers say that they they don't care for all of it too but I'll tell you I'll be honest with you I, I really get annoyed sometimes and like I feel like you know especially with like with Paul's writings talking about the apostleship and I'm not speaking against him at all because I don't think it was him that was writing it it was the Holy Spirit uh, channeling right through him and that's why it resulted in what it resulted in and it was done perfectly. The, the word of the Lord, as Psalms 12, 6 says, is, refi is pure, refined seven times. That means that, that God went through it and made sure that it was absolutely everything that he wanted us to hear and nothing he didn't. And it's all perfectly put in there. No one took anything out or put anything in that was a man. It was only God that decided what went in and what came out. God is able to control that. Make a planet write a book. That's the way I still feel about it. But I wanted to be honest with you that I, that, um, I had, um, you know, a, a falling, kind of a falling away of thinking that I might be saved, and I had um, serious doubts about my prayer, and I had deep depression about not being able to publish my evil, self-serving, wicked fantasy novel. And, um, you know, which I think that's that's the case is is that it, that's what it is, and that was the message that was given to me. Or maybe it's that, you know, it's entering down into the way of publishing novels. My my friends are saying hello, as you can hear. Um, they love it when I'm making a video, you know. But um, it says in uh, Proverbs 7:25, "Let not thine heart." decline to her ways see because maybe my heart was declining to her ways because I'm desperate for money and you know that's always that's always the test of the world you know because if there if you weren't desperate for money then you know all these people wouldn't be doing all this stuff they do it because they need to live and I think that's the test of the world um, because one video I was thinking of making is um, you know when Jesus says um, your righteousness has to surpass the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Remember, these were men of God and li living probably very pious, very pure, very holy type of life. And you say, well, how can the average person who hopes to be saved actually their righteousness can exceed theirs? This is an interesting question and I think it has to do with the issue that I've raised in my Salvation as I have read series is that um, the things of the the ways of the world, which seem ordinary, and everybody just you know you have, you you go to your job, you do whatever it is that you do for your money, it doesn't matter what it is, but it it could be that unless you take a path less traveled, many are called but few are chosen. What are the few doing that's different? It has to be something different that you're doing because the scripture makes clear we will receive for that which we have done in our body so if if I fail and go to hell or if I succeed and go to heaven it's because of what I did and what I didn't do while I was in the world so there does have to be a difference in what you're doing in the world and it's clearly now I mean there's no question that the scripture is saying something about being poor because it says hasn't God chosen the poor to be rich in faith and 
you know, and many other scriptures which make it first of all clear, you know, it's more possible for a rich, uh, for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. So we know that monetary status, your your wealth, has something to do with it. And chances are, it's not going to be being wealthy that's going to get you in. You know, obviously, I mean, that's what the scripture is saying. So it's, it's, you know, the challenge of being poor, the challenge of of having the faith to refrain or not do or whatever it is, you know, because the heart of a man guides his path, but the Lord guides his footsteps along that which his heart was willing to do, will be rewarded not based on necessarily what we were able to figure out, but what our hearts led us along a path to understand because literal understanding is vital it is key but the heart comes first as I have read that's what the scripture is saying one of the things that Chris Lasala said that stuck out in my mind is he said that he feels that the true Christian doesn't seek to entertain themselves well if that's true then I'm not a true Christian and he may be right I don't know, because I have still sought to entertain myself as a Christian in various times. In fact, I probably do that more than I work on other stuff. However, mostly what I've been doing these days is making the shape-shifting movies, aside from looking for work as a graphic artist, designer, writer, whatever I can find, or even just menial labor that I can somehow do. But uh, I thought that I would just show you something, and that is my, because um, one of the questions that I had, and let me just talk about this first, because I think um, one of the things that a lot of people have a, a question about being a Christian is, how come it seems like, like God would, would take away that little ray of light that I told you about, where um, you know it seems like an, a dull, uncreative world of menial drudgery and and uh, you know the things of having to read the Bible and learn the scripture and fear hell and whatever else it is you do go to church but if there's a, a slim ray of of creativity and I found that in my life I mean I've always liked to draw and so that was one of the things that I liked and and to write stories too I just write write some stories but I really liked anime and I really liked to draw stuff and just as a hobby I'm really I'm really not an expert or you know like really practice at it but I got to the point where I could at least produce stuff that was cool enough to to look like it was fairly cool and the question I think comes up that you know in in in, in my heart I resented like you know, it seems like um, if I were to draw stuff like that, that would be against God, and that would be against what God would want me to do. God wants us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Him. That's the path of being a Christian. And is, and it also says that He casts down imaginations, and and one of the seven things that He hates is evil imaginations. And so I knew that as an evil person, because the scripture says that we are evil, you, if, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, uh, showing that uh, we are evil, and that, and also it says that the fruit of an evil, the, the fruit of an evil tree will be evil. So that means that everything that we think of in ourselves, that is our love, our passion, our, our thing that we like, tends to be evil. And as I was discussing earlier, we'll discover at some later point that as we look back on it, we'll see how filthy it is. Right now, we can't see it. So the point is in faith to deny ourselves. But you may know this on a conscious level. And, you know, like I said, a lot of Christians, when they first receive the Word of God and the whole, the whole picture and everything as they get from Scripture, they, in fact, cut out everything like that. I mean, anything that might be making images, you know, creative this, creative that, that's not, you know, um, of the Bible and, and of Christianity and, you know, the, the sobriety and the straight and narrow path. So, 
I could imagine some other Christians seeing me working on my artwork or something and saying, you know, you're you're leading yourself off into a path of evil. You're you're doing wickedness. And am, and is that the case? Is it the case? So let me just um, I just want to show you um, this um, my portfolio piece here. I'll take this off so you can see it. Okay, so here is um, here's my um, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this here. I'm going to turn the light here. Okay, so um, these are just some uh, pictures that I've made. And these are using vector. And these are anime characters that I made. And you can see I like to make these sexy girls. I really like making sexy girls. You say, oh, well, isn't there a problem with that, right? Uh, I heard Chris Lasala say that he feels that all anime is a depiction of the demonic realm. Uh, maybe he's right. But I just want to show you some of these. And these are just drawings that I've made, and I don't make them too much. Uh, I don't have too many, but these are just things that I've that I've created over time. And uh, I just like, and as you can see, I like drawing girls. Um, and like futuristic stuff, you know. This is uh, from my novel, Rainy City. This is Yabu. Yabu again. And I really like the Japanese aesthetic. I was thinking of going on this show that I was born as the as a wrong race, really I'm Japanese. Because I really like I just I just really like that particular style. And uh, I can just see Chris Lasala shaking his head saying, Oh boy, this guy's headed straight to hell. Okay, so I just want to show you that. Okay, so now just as a as a visual comparison, does this, the Holy Bible, and this go together? And I think the answer is pretty obvious, at least to, to most Christians and to especially to you simple and scorner Christians who are going to really scorn me for this video but you know it's it, what I'm trying to say with this is that it's not so easy a topic to it's not so easy to implement in your life you may say that on a common sense level like you know why risk going to hell with you know these evil sexy images that you're drawing let's say even even, even uh, you know completely um, non subject based or you know like something deadpan like architecture or landscape or something like that and then uh, but this but the commandment says make no image or likeness of anything that is in the heaven above that is in the earth or in the in the water below which really if you're gonna play it really common sense safe you don't want to go to hell for doing evil just stay away from image making just for a little while until you go to heaven and maybe you find out that there is creative painting and stuff once you go to heaven because the heavens and the earth will pass away and the former will not even come to mind it will be forgotten so in that new world we may be able to enjoy creativity once we've been given that flesh heart instead of the stone heart so why not just give it up and not have any, any hobby like that and just focus on Jesus Christ just focus on on the scripture focus on good things and I can see where that makes sense but as I said in my life realizing that I was cold and that I didn't like preaching the gospel or I didn't like you know I, I did have some passion for it like when I if I have an opportunity to talk to somebody but it wasn't quite my bag to like go out and preach it now this may be an ex I may be an example of failure when you say okay you know God was giving me messages because I thought about, you know, maybe I should just go to the park and just start preaching the gospel, you know, and talking to people about Jesus Christ. But I never really felt like I wanted to do that. Recently more I have because I know through the Spirit or whatever it is inside of me, I know that we have to be an advocate for salvation in Jesus Christ. That 
is is fairly clear. We have to try to tell people that you know you you may focus on this, that, or the other aliens, um, reincarnation, whatever, all this other stuff, soul progression happening on other planets, black goo, alien spiders, all this stuff. You know that that uh, I've talked about the reptilian shapeshifters, but the whole thing is about whether you're going to heaven or hell, and you're not going to go to heaven without having faith in the blood of Jesus Christ for your sin, offering yourself to God, and accepting Jesus Christ's work on the cross, His death and His resurrection, hoping to be raised with Him also on the third day so that you might come into eternal life. So that is the, that's the main thrust. My point being that, uh, mentioning my, my art hobby, is that, you know, over time, you become uh, bored, you know, like, like if, you, if, you, if, if preaching the gospel and doing that wasn't really your main thing and you realized that you were cold towards God, then you want to do something to fill in your life. But then if you start doing something like the artwork or something like that, that might lead to something which leads you off into hell. So you, like, I think that uh, Christians would tell me, you know, you, got, you just got to stay focused on Jesus Christ, you know, you just got to pray and just, you know, all you do is just, you know, pray and when you come home you pray and you read the Bible and, you know, focus on uh, on prayer study groups and getting together with other Christians and, you know, just focus on the Christian life because you just got to keep, keep yourself away from the desires of your heart, which are wicked, and I, I acknowledge they are. But, again, like I said, it's not so easy to implement in your life when, you know, that stuff doesn't really do it for you, but, you know, and, and furthermore, one of the main questions that Christians have is how come it seems like God doesn't want you to have any sort of fun, any sort of passion or creativity or something apart from preaching the gospel or talking about the gospel or making movies about the scripture and trying to edify people or do whatever it is one might do in Christianity. You know, how come that's the, how come that's the case? You know, why is it why does it seem like that? Why do you have to deny yourself? Because only if you deny yourself, I think, are you going to make it. Um, and so that's why I've been doing a whole lot less of that. In fact, this whole time, this whole year and four months, I haven't done any, any artwork. I've just been doing the reptilian shape shifting thing. I've done a few sketches or whatever, but my heart's kind of broken by it all because this thing with the helicopter harassment and the reptilian shapeshifter and now the discovery of demons and realizing I've got demons in myself it's so dark and negative that the, the part of myself that wants to enjoy what my heart really wants to enjoy doesn't want to do that as much anymore because like when you're when you're feeling dark and depressed you don't really feel like doing inspirational artwork or inspirational writing or fantasy writing because I lived in a whole different world for these last 22 years or 23 years that I've been a Christian and when I discovered this whole reptilian shape-shifting thing, it's like the whole thing suddenly became so dark and ugly. I realized it's like, my God, this is a desperate fight for our souls that we got just got to be, like Paul said, a, a warrior every single day working on the, uh, on the issue of God. And, you know, if, I'm, if I haven't been sincere or if I end up, you know, God knows what's, what your end's going to be. But he'll still use you. He'll still use me to... Uh, do whatever he needs he wants me that I can do and then throw you into hell and I want to say something about hell that I just I know I'm kind of jumping to a lot of different topics you can forgive me I'm a little bit um, ADD and I tend to skip around a lot but the thing is that hell seems like a just idea to you until you are there because when you're in hell then all of a sudden the people who were saying that hell lasts forever doesn't seem quite right to you then, does it? Now, I'm not, I'm not speaking against God's Word in the Bible, and it does seem to say that when you go to hell, it's forever. But also, I would point out that my reading of Scripture is that forever doesn't necessarily mean without end. Um, in several places, for instance, the smoke ascending from Sodom and Gomorrah says that it will rise forever. Uh, so far as we know, there's no cities where the smoke is still rising forever so it could be that forever just means for a very very long time not saying that I don't believe in the witnesses of hell and even the people who are saying that when you go there you realize that you're never gonna get out you realize you're never gonna get out and it's for 
forever, for all of eternity. It's timeless. Time is an illusion. When you're there, you realize you're going to be there forever and ever and ever. But, you know, I'm just, in, the, in my expression of these doubts, I'm expressing that, you know, and I know all, many of you, the thinking people out there who are Christians, you all have this doubt, you know, is hell forever and is that really fair? Because, you know, there's the phrase, um, infinite punishment for finite crime doesn't quite, doesn't quite match. And no matter what you may say on the outside, in your heart, you're thinking, you know, I just can't imagine that God would leave people in a place of horrible torment forever and ever, and it, you would never be done paying for your crimes. Not saying that that may not necessarily be the case. I don't know. That doesn't seem right to me. I'll tell you that right now. Richard Bruce says, look, if it lasts forever and ever and ever, and there's, you know, you couldn't even finish paying for your sin, that, you know, I mean, that's that's horrible beyond imagining. And I, I can't imagine that that's the case. But it may be. One thing I will say is that it may be that, you know, and this is a common thought too. I know plenty of you have had it that it actually isn't forever but when you go there and you're experiencing it you will you will forget first of all like for instance that uh, Bill Weiss was saying um, you he forgot that he was a Christian you may forget or you may remember that you were a Christian but you may your mind may be such given such that you will believe that you were there forever and that's what makes it so terrible is that you will you will just the utter despair of realizing that you'll never ever get out and, you know, the reality may be something different, even if you've had the realization that I just described, that your mind would be controlled, because when you're there, you'll forget everything that you remembered on earth as far as that goes, and you'll just be in the utter horrible despair of realizing that you're going to be in that horrible, horrible place with worms crawling in your outballs and out, out your ears uh, for eternity, and you're just never going to get out. But I, I would just say, you know, I'm... I am perplexed and troubled by that, and it doesn't seem, that, that whole scenario doesn't seem right to me, because, you know, the idea of hell and or everlasting hell is acceptable unless you actually find yourself there, because I think if you find yourself there, then all of a sudden, you know, and even if you just think about it, you know, um, you know, we know that a lot of people don't know about hell that ended up there didn't even know about it and they ended up there and it's forever there's never any forgiveness you're never getting out that just doesn't seem right to me and I don't know if it's right to preach that so I'm not gonna tell people that I think that you know you're gonna go to hell forever because there's a story that Jesus tells about um, when he says that uh, and the officer will cast you into prison and the and then when you when you're in prison you'll have to stay there until you've paid every last mite that might be an indication that justice is served in hell and that you do in fact finish paying and are finally allowed to die and that's that's why it's called destruction because it is destruction but you have to pay for your sin um, the witnesses of Hitler uh, show the uh, the uh, Brian Melvin case is that um, he was burning alive and he had to burn alive for each and every person that he was responsible for burning in the gas chambers. So he had to experience that. And so it would seem to make some kind of sense that he would have to burn alive for every single person that he was responsible for. But even that is, is horrible beyond imagining. Also, as Bill Weiss was describing, you can't even live with the memory of the terror of hell. And that thought is just beyond, beyond. And uh, that's more I want to look into this whole issue of hell because it's just, it's one of those things that's very unpleasant to look at, but it's a huge part of the Christian walk in faith. And I believe the witnesses, um, you know, I had a friend of mine who led me a book as I described in a movie, um, Hell Testimonies by Mike Peralta. And I think about more than half of the stories, uh, my friend crossed it out and said, false. And then another one he said he wrote true, false, true, false, true, false. In other words, based on what he thought was biblical and or, you know, matched with other stories concerning hell. And, I mean, I wouldn't even begin to judge whether these persons were truthful or not, except that in my heart, if I feel it's true, 
then I'm, I'm going to say I think it is, or you know, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to say this, I think this hell testimony is true. So um, I'm not going to discount anyone's testimony. But it is so bad. It is so horrible. I mean, worms crawling in and out of your flesh, and then your, uh, the flames burn your flesh, and then your flesh grows back, and or you're just a skeleton sitting there burning in the lake of fire, and it just goes, it just goes on and on and on. How can, how can we accept that? I mean, I think it's that is so terrible and so um, unbelievable that we really, you know, I, I'm, you're talking to somebody who believes in hell, but you really, I, I don't think you really grasp it until maybe you've, you've had a personal experience of it, like Bill Weiss or some of these other people that have, uh, you know, and Angelica Zambrano and, and all these other people who have had a, a testimony that actually seen it and experienced it, and then it may become more real. But if you haven't, then it might be kind of like this, you know, like a lot of things, even like God and Jesus Christ and heaven and hell and everything else. It's like a uh, um, kind of a, a story, a, a, a sci-fi or a, you know, sci a fiction, fictional kind of idea like a novel you've read but it's real this is a this is a real thing and uh, definitely I uh, you know I've always said I mean you know we've got to be worried about it but there's a lot of people that don't even know about hell I and mean, then there's a lot of Christians that don't even really believe it's real they don't think that there's really a place underground where they're gonna end up that's so bad that it, once you were there you would be living the most saintly life running out doing everything preaching the gospel just like 24 7 until you practically drop dead every single day working for God just for the opportunity to get out and do it over again because it's so bad um, I mean you know, you, the things that Bill Weiss was describing I mean you, you, you don't have any blood um, you, you're so desperate for water that you would just you would treasure even just one drop um, you know, your your head can get crushed, but you still you're still alive and you feel it. Um, you know, those horrible horrible things um, are just um, incomprehensible. You know, how do you um, how do you reconcile that with your daily life? And you know, mm, I feel like going to the store for an ice cream cone. You know, it just it's like the the two don't really quite match up. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do as far as my Christian walk because as I said I don't know if I'm really qualified to preach the gospel but one thing I can at least do is make the shapeshifter movies because I think it does something I think there is something that is useful to God's kingdom with that so that's why I'm gonna continue doing it and I think it does reveal if we start to realize that we have these creatures living inside of us and causing all kinds of havoc from sickness and death to depression to you know evil thoughts that cause us to have problems one of the things that I've discovered about these demons especially from watching TB Joshua's channel is that uh, Emmanuel TV by the way that's the name of the, his channel Emmanuel TV uh, the the demons have these creatures that are real and now you can see them because I've revealed them in this shape-shifting I mean this is not you know hearsay I mean you can see it and I, I like to do movies that anybody might have in their collection or whatever they can check out themselves and, conf and confirm this is true just take your video camera to your high-def screen record at 60 frames per second bring it into your video editor and go through it frame by frame and you really we'll see it so we know that these things are real and the question is what are we going to do about it and I am still have a question about what to do about it but at least if we can get people to understand that this is real that things like cancer and all kinds of diseases and problems could be directly caused by these creatures that are trying to destroy us uh, we can wake people up but what I was going to say about the character of demons uh, these creatures is that they really are strongly motivated to destroy us they destroy us through all kinds of sin for instance as I was just describing with my anime artwork it could be that a demon has been 
plaguing me, trying to get me to do this and trying to, you know, have me focus on that, knowing that it distracts from the walk and leads the heart away. Because uh, one thing that's important in God's Word says that um, whoredoms and wine and new wine take the heart away. Now, there's a code to the wine and the new wine, which I don't get, but whoredoms is pretty straightforward. And if I'm drawing characters of sexy girls or whatever because it stimulates me, I like doing it, that could be whoredoms. And that could be leading my heart away from God. So that's that's one thing to look at this. But, you know, it has, you know, whether you're saved or damned, it, the shape-shifting exposure, the d demon exposure, which, by the way, I do now believe that I would say... 90% of what I've uncovered, or more, maybe even 99%, is actually demons. And I've had other people comment that the shape-shifting that I've shown is, is from demons. And as I've talked about before, the fact that I know that I'm not a physical shape-shifter, and yet you see what looks like the flesh and even the teeth sh changing shape, this is a phenomena that happens it means, if you're not a physical shapeshifter, it means that the demons that live inside us can cause what appear to be physical changes, even with flesh color. So even like, for instance, with the Harrison Ford shapeshift with the horns sticking out, that could be a demon living inside of him. In fact, the, the more I think about it, the more it's leaning towards that. Yet I still believe that the scripture describes a physical serpent that must have talked with Eve, and I mean a lizard man. So these creatures are, are real too, and they may also be using shape-shifting, or they shape-shift. And I think that that is a real phenomenon. I still think that that's a real case. It's just that the majority of shape-shifting that we might see with the reptilian slit eyes, with uh, a lot of other stuff that we're seeing on people on TV, is in fact spiritual beings called demons living inside of us and that and it could even be that um, the whole thing with David Icke revealing the reptilian shapeshifters is that using a real subject of real physical shapeshifters to try to perhaps lead people away from the thought of demons. It doesn't want people to focus on demons because the demons indwelling us I believe are Satan's main tool to destroy us and what we hear is that they communicate with each other and also um, they send various different demons, the Satan sends various different demons to come and to live inside of us and especially um, can we can make a choice, like a subconscious choice, to let these demons in. So this could, uh, if, if he can throw something out there, even, the, even his physical shape-shifting children to try to distract us from this idea that we have uh, demonic beings living inside of us, uh, that um, would be worth it for him to risk the, the danger it poses, especially since most humans can't believe it or even and do anything about it, So, about the physical shapeshifters, so why not use that as a tool to keep people's minds away or try to fool people into thinking that the majority of the shapeshifting that people are starting to catch now um, in in all these videos of and people on TV and so forth is in fact demons. They're trying to distract. They don't want people to know that you have a demon entity living inside of you controlling, you know, can put thoughts into your mind, could cause diseases, could cause, you know, other people to react to you in certain ways. I think th these demons are, are what's been holding me back in, in my situation. It's an affliction. God knows about it. God gave it to me. God gives it to people. And it's a, it's, he exercises us with those things, with those affliction of demons. And that if we overcome in our walk with Christ, if we mature in Christ enough, if we really, if, our, if, if we're on the path of success, if what you have in your heart is pure, and, you, and you're on the path to making it, you will overcome that. And then at the right time, you'll be delivered. Uh, and I was just asking, actually, Chris LaSalle in, in an email, and we'll see what he has to say, that um, one of the problems I noticed with deliverance is when Jesus says um, a demon walks out of a man 
and then look, looking for rest, he doesn't find any, and then he comes back and he, founds the, he finds the, the house swept and garnished, and then he brings in seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and the first state and the second state of that man is worse than the first. So the thing is is that if we haven't overcome sin or if we haven't put on the full armor of God, it could be that we are in a deliverance, you might actually be in a worse situation because you've you've had somebody cast a demon out of you, but you haven't overcome that sin. And so then maybe it comes back in. You may think that you're over that sin, but you're not or may, you may not even realize that you have a sin that's allowing those demons to come in. So uh, that was a question that I that I asked him about that, but I don't know. Um, I mean, I think that surely God will deliver you in His in His right time. But our deliverance ministries part of that. I mean, I know that the you know when when Jesus cast out a, a, a demon, it could be, and then when He says, "Go and sin no more," you know, but that person went and and, and still sinned. Well, you know, that was their fault for not repenting of their sin. But it could be that in the end time, in our eternal lives, we will be given to know, as I think I was, or at least that's my, my theory, and I don't know, I could be completely wrong about this, but I felt like I knew that when it's time to be baptized, God would let me know, because baptism signifies a, a cleansing. Water signifies cleansing. If you think about what baptism is, you, you're dunking your head in water, that signifies a cleansing. So if you go and sin after that, are you not putting Christ to open shame and then he needs to be crucified again and you need to be washed clean of your sins again because the name of Christ is the, is the last and final baptism by which we should be baptized in order to be saved into eternal life, which means you sin no more. So my thinking about baptism and why I, have, why I haven't done it was that because God will tell us in our right time, as I believe God, you know, told Jesus Christ when he was supposed to go and get the baptism with John, because that was the time that he was ready to receive it. And should we wait until we're ready, or should you, as most people, and I, I know the vast majority of Christians are going to balk at this, and you know, because they're already baptized and whatever, but I'm just saying that that was a question that I had about it. I so must seal